well it's been a while since I did a video so I thought it'd be a um, good time to do another one um, I've been ordering some stuff for the uh, scooter so uh, what I've got already is the battery charger which is a Hobby King Eco 610 it's a 200 watt uh, balance charger so it's got the balance but it also does uh, nickel metal hydride and um, nickel cadmium and also lead acid batteries as well so it's sort of just a multi-purpose charger and you know, it's really handy I really like that charger it's been working well for me so far and it does everything too like you know can cycle uh, cycle batteries to you know get the capacity back from the memory effect and you know can discharge lipos and put them into a storage voltage and all that sort of stuff so and 40 bucks like I don't even know how they can do something like that for 40 bucks, it's just crazy. Um, actually, uh, Dave at uh, EV Blog did a teardown of a similar charger. Um, it's actually just slightly lower current than this one, but internally it's actually very similar. So I'll put a link to that if you're interested in seeing how these actually, or well, seeing the internals of one of these. Um, but apart from that, I got two lithium batteries as well just two for now, I'll probably get a third later on so yeah, 5 amp hour, 6 cell so there's two of those and also the motor <laughs> it's crazy to think that this is actually 2.7 kilowatts power handling like it, it's about a kilo but compared to the brush, load, the brush motor already in there it weighs basically nothing and it's actually smaller too so yeah, the power density of these things is just insane. So that's the mounting bracket already on it. Um, along with that, it comes with two propeller adapters. Let me focus. So yeah, it's just got a collet on there, and this is designed to clamp onto a, a propeller. And as you tighten it down, it pushes this over the collet and holds it onto the motor shaft. Yeah, like that. So what I have to do is turn this down to eight millimeters and also thread it and put a D key in it so I can fit one of those. Okay. That's the original sprocket. Um, I could get a new bigger one, but it's sort of a pain because you have to get them well from China basically if you want them for any decent price so what I'm going to have to do I think is use this thing off, use some washers to hold this thing in the middle so that the chain can go around it properly but um, if I'm getting this turned down to 8 mils anyway I might get them to cut these flanges off just so there's a bit more clearance there but that'll work well enough anyway because it'll have the D key in it which will hold it still so um, yeah I was actually surprised that this stuff came in boxes you know that's the motor box it's the charger box and I also got a oh, this is um, another propeller adapter this one actually mounts on the back on the back of the motor but if you mount it there because the mounting point for the motor is at the front you're sort of putting stress on the motor that way so it's better to sort of have the mounting point as close to the mounting bracket as you can um, apart from that I just got a little cell checker thing I've got a couple of these but they're in Victoria at the moment so they're handy and they're only like four bucks anyway the lithium batteries didn't come in their own special box but you know it's good enough um, I've ordered the controller, this is just the paper mock-up but I've ordered this so that'll be here in hopefully just under two weeks. Um, apart from that what I've been working on is the circuit diagram here. So how what this circuit's actually going to do is it's going to be sort of an interface between the motor controller and the batteries. Um, because the batteries don't have their own inbuilt over and under voltage protection and everything, I have to do it manually. So, 
what I'm going to use is this handy little chip up here which is actually a Texas Instruments uh, battery protection chip so it's got inputs for all the lithium cells and it also has a shunt input for overcurrent um, it's I squared C interface but that's just for programming it doesn't actually output any data over that so um, what will also have to happen is because I'm going to have a microcontroller in this as well displaying on an LCD display I've got a uh, I think it's 16 bit differential ADC there so that will also connect to the shunt and I'm hoping the input impedance of that and the battery chip will be low enough to have the shunt work properly on both so that will provide readings to the microcontroller which is an 80 mega 32 u4 and that has its own USB which I'm not intending on really using much but you know it's nice to have it there to reprogram it and stuff sorry about the noisy, noisy bird in the background if you can hear that <laughs> but um, yeah this is the I squared C output or input input output clock whatever which will have to go to this and the battery monitoring chip through a header so you can disconnect that just for ease of use over here is well the main power front end basically so over here we've got three battery balancing connectors and this is the charging input so that just connects directly into the, um, the battery packs and then these here are basically um, because this Texas instrument battery chip can actually do cell balancing um, which is really handy but you have to current limit the input so you don't exceed the power dissipation of the chip so you've got all these resistors here to do that and then just some you know some it's basically a low pass filter just to level out any spikes or anything um, this is the actual power input this will be where all the high current stuff flows so that'll go into a switch and I have a three position switch here um, one intention was to use a three position um, key switch to have low and high power modes um, so what that'll do is that switch will connect either two or three if it connects two it'll power the battery chip over up here wherever it is up there which will power the microcontroller and whatever but if you switch it to three it'll also still power the battery chip but it'll also send through this divider here to the microcontroller then the microcontroller can realize that it's in either a low or high power mode and it will reprogram the controller using the um, RX and TX pins here um, so that the controller so we can limit the controller current and speed so that'll limit acceleration and the max speed it can go so that's handy um, the reason for this switch here powering the battery chip and then the microcontroller is that we need it as minimal power usage while it was uh, uh, turned off as possible just because if you accidentally leave it on we don't want it draining the batteries um, below a repairable state so um, worst case the only thing that will be on is this divider the whole time if you accidentally leave it on so um, but I've designed that so that you can see that it's really high value so that only draws you know 400 microamps and I can probably bring that down even more but I'm not sure what the um, input impedance of the microcontroller is so uh, I'll look at that later uh, we have our main current output which has our shunt on it and it also has a diode feeding into the charge input uh, reason for that is the controller actually does regenerative braking so that needs to be able to feed current back through the shunt so we can measure how much it's regenerating and then back into the charge input so uh, one nice feature about this chip is it does actually have two separate uh, FETs here so it can actually do over voltage and under voltage and over current it can do basically every protection you can need so all the charging will have to go through here into the pack and then all the discharging has to come through here into the, you know the motor and everything and of course your camera battery runs out so uh, apologies if the last bit of the video there was a bit shaky I was holding the camera by hand so I've got it on the tripod now so I can explain this a bit better um, so what's going on here 
is this battery protection chip here. Um, it has a discharge and a charge uh, MOSFET gate drive. So this chip has full control over whether the battery can discharge or be charged. So um, it's actually a chip designed to be built into the battery pack itself. So uh, in my case, this is basically what I'm doing. So I figured it was probably the best chip to use. Um, so what's happening here is we've just got charge gate going through a um, gate resistor there and we have a pull down resistor here that just stops the FET from coming on by itself if the, um, the gate drives off just because they have uh, capacitance there so same thing for this one here with the discharge but instead on this one here we actually have a second NPN transistor here with a pull up resistor and what this will do is figure out how to easily scroll over here. Yeah. Um, this will connect to a microcontroller pin. <clears throat> so we wanted the microcontroller to be able to um, to be able to dis discharge, <laughs> turn off the motor basically. So just in case something goes wrong or self shut down or something like that. So um, what this pin does is when the microcontroller says it's okay for the discharge vet to come on, it'll pull this pin low, um, which will turn off this transistor. Because when this trend, uh, when the microcontroller pin is high or off, um, this resistor will pull this up high, and what it'll do is it'll drain the FET drive out, so that this FET can't turn on. So when this, when the microcontroller pulls this low this pin isn't pulled high anymore, this is turned off and the FET drive can turn on the FET basically, so that's all that does. Um, let's zoom out here. Let me scroll up, there we go. No, I haven't got the top of my screen. Um, yeah, so this is a the battery monitor power that we saw on the switch before. Um, so that switch purely controls this chip. It doesn't do anything else except for, well, send a logic signal, but that doesn't do anything. So in order to get power out of this thing, you have to power up this chip. So that's connected to the battery input there, which I think I'm gonna have to put a diode and a capacitor on just for, you know, not really spike, I suppose, brownout prevention, yeah. Um, so that's basically all that chip does. So that will monitor all the cells for us and, you know, basically look after the batteries entirely so we don't have to do it with the microcontroller. So, um, over on this side, so this is the 16-bit uh, ADC differential input for the shunt. So that is um, I squared C into the microcontroller over here. Uh, our oscillator of course and then you've got the chip itself with the reset pin pulled up and you know all that fun stuff so up here is the microcontroller power so as I said before all the power has to run through the battery chip in order for the thing to turn on so these pop-ups are annoying so what this does is this battery protection chip up here actually has a voltage regulator output which is 3.3 volts which isn't enough to run the microcontroller because I need 5 volts but the handy thing about this voltage regulator is that when the battery goes into an under voltage condition this chip basically shuts down so this voltage regulator output will also shut down so basically what I'm doing is using that as a handy little switch here so when the voltage regulator is on, everything's okay. So what it'll do is this NPN transistor will pull this PNP transistor to ground and it will allow five volts into our voltage regulator and then to the microcontroller and everything else. Um, when the battery protection chip goes into unvolted protection, uh, the voltage regulator will turn off, this um, transistor will turn off and then this resistor will pull this PNP transistor high so it won't allow 5 volts into this regulator and the microcontroller will be turned off so 
in an under voltage condition, if you accidentally leave it on, the only thing that will be powered is this battery monitoring chip. And when it detects under voltage, it goes into a shutdown mode, and I believe it draws about 12 microamps. So on a 5 amp, uh, well, it'll be 10 amp hours. So on a 10 amp hour battery, that'll just last basically forever. So you don't have to really worry about that, but you have to be careful if you're designing something like this to watch out for things like resistive dividers because like I said over here is it down here this resistive divider here if you accidentally leave it switched on to this three position this resistive divider will slowly drain your batteries very very slowly but it will um, so you really sort of need to avoid having anything that can drain the batteries that can't be controlled, like turned on and off. So um, this is kind of an unavoidable thing I have to do. I mean, I could do it with transistors and you know, it would add a heap of components, but I might not even use that key switch, three position key switch yet, because they're quite expensive. But you know, the options there if I want to do it, and you know, the odd chance I might leave it on for a day or two or something. This drawing very little current won't really do anything. So. It's not that big of an issue anyway, so, um, yeah, like I said, this output connector here, it'll actually have regen power coming back up there because the controller, controller doesn't have separate regen output, so the power will come back through here and it will be forced to go through this diode and then into the charge pin of the um, battery protection chip. Um, reason for this is there's no diode here on the discharge but if you go up to the battery here monitor you can see that you have a FET here anyway so the power can't get back through that way anyway so it has to go through that diode and then through the charging FET and then into the battery so hopefully that'll that'll work um, obviously this diode is going to have to be my mouse there it is this diode is going to have to be really high current rated because you could end up with something like 50 amp peaks or something going through that so um, same with these FETs up here these are the only power handling things there are so yeah, these are Texas Instrument parts also uh, rated for 40 volts at 130 amps continuous so that should be more than enough for both of them basically so um, yeah the only high current path will really be through these connectors Where's it going? Through the connectors, up through here, and then either out to the motor and whatever else, or in from the charger. So yeah, it goes from these inputs straight into this, and then it goes out to the motor and whatever else. Um, so yeah, that's basically the controller portion of it. So there's a bit more work I have to do on this yet. Like this controller is going to be able to monitor your ground speed and do calculations on estimated time remaining and all that sort of stuff temperature monitoring so that's basically all the power handling stuff done so the rest is just going to have to be done on this microcontroller here so I've got heaps of spare inputs and outputs I can use for that so that's all good so um, yeah that's just basically an overlook of the electronics um, yeah anyway thanks for watching